Prince of Persia The Lost Crown is such a blast to play on so many levels. While it may be fairly streamlined when it comes to customization options, it makes up for this with a neatly crafted combat system. In this video, we'll dive into the basics of combat, talking about melee and range attacks, parries, dodges, cancels, and more. If you're looking to learn a thing or two about the game's combat, then this is the video for you. So let's dive in and break down the basics of combat in Prince of Persia The Lost Crown. In The Lost Crown, we play as Sargon, an agile warrior a part of the Immortals, tasked with rescuing the Prince of Persia. Sargon fights up close and personal with his signature dual blades, Kais and Layla, or at a distance with the Bow of Menelaus. Sargon's basic melee combo contains three strikes that can cover some solid ground, with the combo finisher propelling back lighter enemies. Holding the melee attack input after the second strike of this combo will change Sargon's combo finisher, where he now finishes with a dual stab, useful for striking enemies lined up next to each other or for destroying wooden shields carried by certain enemies. Sargon can also send out an Athra Blade projectile by holding down the melee attack all on its own to strike foes at a distance. And once you've unlocked Shadow of the Samorg, Sargon can clone his current position and action, allowing you to project two Athra Blades in quick succession to one another. Now the first two strikes of Sargon's basic melee combo can be cancelled at any time with either a parry, dodge, or jump. This can be especially useful for resetting the attack sequence or for avoiding an enemy attack at the last second. Combo finishers, however, cannot be cancelled, which is why you should typically avoid using them unless you know you can land the finisher without getting interrupted. This continuous melee to dodge cancel combo here works great for avoiding the melee combo finishers, and it can also really help to keep quicker enemies stunlocked. Now, aside from being a skilled fighter on the ground, Sargon can also fight enemies when airborne. Lighter enemies can be air launched in various ways and then be juggled in the air when struck by arrows. Juggling enemies will stunlock them in midair until Sargon's arrow supply is depleted. If juggling isn't your thing though, Sargon can easily follow an enemy into the air if you hold the melee attack input during an air launch. When airborne, you can either chain together a basic 3 hit combo, an upward or downward slash, and finally a downward slam attack. The downward slash is insanely powerful if used properly as it can stun lock many of the enemy types throughout the game. Plus, combined with the 4 Royal Stars amulet, you'll receive increased melee damage in the air, making this attack extremely valuable. Dodge cancels will be essential for chaining these attacks together, but we'll cover those a bit later in the video. Arrow shots can also be incorporated throughout your aerial melee attacks, and this trick is best used to cancel and reset the basic 3 hit combo and extend your airtime. Furthermore, once you unlock Rush of the Samorg and the Gravity Wings ability, Sargon becomes a force to be reckoned with in the air. You'll be able to track enemies with the dash once they're propelled away from his melee finisher to perform yet another air combo. Air launches and combos are really great for thinning out a crowd of enemies, especially if you find yourself overwhelmed by them on the ground. Now, there's a good chance you've been using the bow of Menelaus predominantly for chipping away at an enemy's health, but apart from this and juggling enemies midair, arrows will also stun lock most enemies on the ground. Plus, arrows can even interrupt many of their attacks. Yellow and red indicator attacks are the only exception and cannot be interrupted by arrows. If you find yourself overwhelmed by a group of enemies, Enemies, you can use arrows to keep some attacking enemies at bay, while Sargon uses his swords to take down each enemy one at a time. Sargon also has access to a chakram when holding down the ranged attack input, and mainly you'll use this for puzzles throughout the world. When charged, the chakram has a projected path that it will follow before it returns to Sargon. It'll also deal damage on its return, which you can definitely use to your advantage. However, the coolest feature of the chakram is the ability to parry it on return. I use this trick quite a lot during a couple of boss fights when I needed to keep my distance at times. Another neat trick is that pairing the chakram also builds up your Athra meter. It's not a lot of build up, but it can surely help in sticky situations. Later on in the game, Sargon also gains the ability to teleport to the chakram's location after being thrown, creating new combo opportunities and combat potential. Now, on the defensive side of combat, Sargon is just as adept with avoiding damage as he is in dealing it. He's equipped with a parry and dodge, both of which can be executed when grounded or airborne. The parry will briefly stagger an attacking enemy and leave them open for counterattacks. If the parry is missed, however, Sargon will take increased damage from that attack, making the parry ability a riskier option compared to dodging. The parry can also be used to cancel a majority of Sargon's melee attacks, which is helpful if you prefer to suit a more aggressive playstyle. About 8 hours or so into the game, you'll be able to unlock the Shield of Mithra amulet, which creates a slow motion time bubble around Sargon after any successful parry. This creates a larger window for Sargon's counter strikes and can make some tough enemies easier to take down. Now, Sargon can parry just about every enemy attack, even those with this yellow indicator. Parrying these types of attacks will result in a stylish finisher that immediately defeats that enemy, regardless of how much health they have. Bosses are the only exception and will instead be dealt a solid amount of damage and depending on which 
boss even be stunned. The only attacks that can't be parried, however, will be those with a red indicator, and these will need to be dodged. There's a couple dodge variations, and they each have their uses. Slide dodges can help to reposition Sargon behind many shielded enemies to strike them with his double kick. The backstep dodge seems to be useful for very easily canceling melee attacks, avoiding wide AoE attacks, or for simply creating distance between you and an aggressive enemy. Plus, if the dodge input is pressed a second time after the backstep, Sargon will perform yet another dodge if needed. Now, just like the parry, performing any dodge will cancel a majority of Sargon's melee attacks. However, unlike the parry, dodges themselves can be canceled by inputting a melee attack, range attack, or a jump. I feel this gives the dodge a slight upper hand in overall usability since canceling is a really important mechanic for this game's combat, and being able to recognize each of the various ways you can perform cancels will definitely allow you to fight more confidently. Alright, now moving on to Aether Surges. Aether Surges are special abilities that you'll gain access to when progressing through the story. I won't spoil how they're obtained, but if you've already found new surges throughout your playthrough, then you already know how to continue unlocking them. To use one, you'll need to have your surge meter filled to at least level 1, 2, or 3 depending on the surge you have equipped. The surge meter fills after successful melee attacks or after a successful parry. Parrying attacks fills the surge meter at a noticeably quicker rate, so definitely take advantage of this when you can. When activating in offensive Aether Surge, Sargon will be invincible for the attack's duration, and the attack itself will interrupt attacks from enemies and bosses. Now, the actual Surge abilities themselves come in a wide variety and are mainly offense-based, ranging from defense-piercing melee strikes and powerful long-range projectiles. But some of the more unique Surges, like Bauman's Breath, can create a healing zone for regaining health if you find yourself out of potions. This Surge will be really helpful against long boss fights, especially if you're playing on a higher difficulty. I definitely recommend having this one equipped during bosses, but during normal gameplay, you can swap it out for another. The Soul of Gilgamesh is another really great surge that you can unlock about 10 hours into the game. Its effect lasts 20 seconds, and when activated, it fully restores Sargon's health, strengthens his attacks, as well as increases defense against melee damage. But the really unique feature about this surge is the fact that it boosts Sargon's overall speed. This includes his melee attacks, dodges, and jumps. Combos will become easier to chain together as well with this increased attack speed, so I definitely recommend giving this surge a try. Alright, and finally let's talk about amulets, which are essentially passive boosts that we can equip on Sargon to buff his offensive or defensive capabilities. You start the game off with only a few amulet slots, but you can increase your slot capacity by finding amulet slot upgrades within various chests throughout the world. On top of that, you'll find new amulets to equip as well, and they mainly serve offensive or support purposes like by increasing Sargon's sword or arrow damage, increasing Aether buildup from parries, increasing overall health, or adding additional strikes to Sargon's basic melee. Melee combo. There's a few utility based amulets as well, like the Ekbatana Steel, which allows Sargon to collect time crystals from a distance. I find myself using this one when farming for crystals, and it made that process much more enjoyable. One of my favorites, though, is the Eye of Destiny, which will display enemy health bars when they're dealt damage. And once I had this one equipped, I actually found it pretty difficult to remove since I got so used to seeing these health bars. It especially helps with some of the tougher enemies later on in the game, since you can now see how much health they have left during the fight, which allows you to pace your attacks and use them a bit more effectively. But regardless, I would suggest testing out different amulets and builds to see what best suits you and how you like to play the game, because you really can't go wrong with any of them. The 2D action-focused combat in Prince of Persia The Lost Crown is such a blast to play, and unlocking new abilities over the course of the game's story kept combat feeling fresh and always had me coming back for more. Couple this with precise platforming and zippy world traversal abilities, I think any gamer can pick this game up and have an enjoyable time with it. Those were all my essential combat tips, and I hope you guys found this video helpful in some way. That's going to be a wrap here on this video. I'd love to hear what your guys' thoughts are on this game's combat, so be sure to let me know down in the comments below. And lastly, as always, thanks for tuning in today. I'll see you all in the next one.